apply. Words to live by from the Daily Mojo. I mean, there's a lot of cool things about the success of this movie. Uh, one of the best, though, is that it's not only done this amount of money, but it's done this on a dramatically smaller number of screens than the bigger uh, bigger films. So I think it's in somewhere around 2,800 or thereabouts, and a lot of the other mm-hmm. movies are in far more. So that shows that far fewer screens, far more people are jamming them uh, because they want to see this. And number two, the fact that Rolling Stone and a few others have tried to come out and say, oh, well, this is terrible. This is, quote, QAnon, you name it. Oh, well, this is just something we need to write off. Whenever they aggressively go out there and do that, just like they did with opposition to masks, just like they did with you know nearly everything else, that shows there's a reason for people to get involved. We've become the counterculture, so it's good that now people want to come out and see what the counterculture is. And the counterculture is not blows. abusing children. How about that? Right. I know it's, it's again, it's just, it's weird. And it's hard to wrap your mind around what these people who now hold power are for. And apparently they seem to be for the sex slave trade. I don't, I, I mean, and we know it exists. I mean, so I, I, just, I don't understand how they come out and, and say that the movie is, is QAnon. And it's all, you know, a, a pipe dream because we, we have proof. We've seen people. I know people who have participated in these operations to, you know, bring some of these bad guys down. So I know it exists. It's for, a lack so of empathy to, in this country, Brad. That's what it is. It's a lack of empathy it, in this country because that's not even empathy. What the hell that's makes the this denying a truth. conspiracy theory? That's what's getting yeah. me. How can that's you call this a conspiracy theory, you uh, non-empathetic bastard? Sorry, it nothing. has nothing to do with empathy, though. It has yeah. to do with what is real and what isn't real. Right. But how, can you, how can you not empathize with the fact that there are people out there who are being taken against their will, sold into the slave trade, and, and it's provable? How can you not be empathetic with that, even to just one person? And I'm, what I'm saying is, is these people have no idea. They've never met anybody that, that this has happened to. They live in an area where it probably doesn't happen as much as it happens on the borders or whatever the case may be. People just don't get it. This is not a conspiracy theory. Stop trying to make us QAnon adjacent. Well, but again, it goes back to my point that they're trying to say it's not real. Yeah, go ahead, Phil. You're on the right track, but I'm going to say this. It's it's not just that these people lack empathy. It's that they believe in and embrace something that is 180% wrong. And I'm not saying that the writer of the Rolling Stone piece is pro-child trafficking, but what they are generally pro is permissive in every way. They take the idea of, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, live and let live to the extreme. Live and let live is a good philosophy, but there are certain things that are wrong. Abusing children is wrong. You should never live and let that live, and that's never okay. And we've gotten to the point in our society where, sadly, we have people that are so open-minded that their brains fall out, and that's where we get to this. You know, right up the street from where I live in McLean, Virginia, and you've heard of McLean because that's where all of the wealthy and successful D.C. types are one of the two areas where a lot of them live, McLean and the others, Potomac, Maryland. Uh, There was a bust at a diplomat's home uh, where they had been keeping children that were trafficked. That was a few years ago. Uh, and you think about it, this is not, uh, you know, some scary looking people who you, 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 you know, you're, you're pretty sure they're on the margins, so to speak. No, these are the same people you go to the food store with. You are probably sitting uh, nearby you in the coffee shop or otherwise that's who's doing it. And what's even scarier when I think about it is whenever you hear somebody getting busted with this type of thing, it's never that they say have one picture or one video. No, no. They have gigabytes, terabytes, and they're part of rings that are trading this. So that means there's a lot of people involved, and that means our society has become depraved. And I'm not even talking about a religious anything here or political anything here. It's just there's a lot of rot under the surface. It's really bizarre. It it truly is. But again, we focus on the fact that this movie is doing well. People are, are, are going to see it, are supporting it. And yeah, I guess it makes me wonder if, if folks are trying to figure out how they can help fight it. 
you know what you know do they do they give to things like operation um, underground railroad uh tim ballard and the group uh you know what what do you do it's the same it's the same situation i think a lot of people find themselves in when it's like how do you battle the machine that is washington yeah well it's it's actually i think it's pretty easy number one yes you should give to uh operation underground railroad i think that's great uh number two i think you should get as many people as possible to go out and see this i know if you go to i think it's angel productions uh what they have is a link where you can help donate to purchase tickets for others who can't afford it because the first thing to do with anything is information that's also what we do at freedom works information education let people know there's a problem out there they know it's real so they can get that get through that because that's step one a lot of people will not understand or take action once they understand something's real so that's number one but number two is we've got to be uh sensible about what goes on i remember being a kid like early teen and uh obviously i'm a rail enthusiast and one of the places i'd go watch trains one of the people who came over all the guys the other guys the normal guys they said look stay away from him he was a big producer of railroad films unfortunately he was also apparently a big producer of other films if you know what i mean nobody who knew took action they just simply talked about it you know amongst each other oh well that's so and so he's bad blah 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 oh stay away from him right. well wait a minute if you have actionable intelligence if you know somebody is doing something wrong if you know a child that's being hurt if you see something say something like they like they say in the commercials that's step one right. because that will make it so much more difficult and it puts the responsibility where it matters which is with each of us DMX DM over on the Twitter says, Ron is correct. We as a nation are desensitized to everything that happens to everyone else while also being hypersensitive to our own perceived needs. Yes. Wow. Well said. Well, and my, and my thing, Brad, is, is and, and maybe empathy wasn't the word I was looking for, but what I'm trying to say is, is if, if, if you're thinking about child predators and child trafficking, then your heart hurts, Right. It hurts it for should, these yes. children. But for yeah. these people, their hearts don't seem to hurt. They just, all they are, they're blinded by the fact that they've got to go after something that somebody else that that they don't like said. And that's right. that's more important to them than the child trafficking aspect of things. If you're a parent and your child gets kidnapped and sold into slavery, uh, how do you not have empathy for that person? Or and hope that you I hope mean, that the parent is Liam Neeson. Oh, wow. taken. Yes, let's go. Come in. He has a special set of skills, and he will come after them. But uh, uh, Wanker Beaver oddly has a great uh, suggestion here. Rolling Stone needs to send Miles Clee on an op with uh, O U R Rescue. Let him see firsthand. Yeah. That was the first thing I thought of. Is why don't why why don't you as this guy this uh, this reporter why don't you go on one of these. Uh, raids and see you know what uh what it's really all about the guy said the guy's actually locked down his twitter account it's i mean again <laughs> i don't know why he, he would because he said something stupid right and he doesn't it's, want to deal with the backlash uh, idiot and you notice what happens lock down the twitter account then when you see them in public if you see them in public they're always wearing a mask they want to hide it, it, it's right. almost that's <laughs> that's the uh the, the playbook over there yeah, you are uh, you are correct, sir. Um, all right, how can people get involved with uh, FreedomWorks? Look, go to FreedomWorks.org. If you're not happy with a lot of the things that you're seeing today, and this is one of them now, why, well, we don't do, obviously, work on child trafficking. What we do is work on educating people to be more effective and able to connect with others and policymakers. So you can take the skills we teach you and help with the issues that matter to you. And this is most certainly one that should matter to you. So freedomworks.org, sign up to join Freedom Teams, do it today. And yes, check out the People's House. July 24th, 2023 is the premiere. 25th, it'll be available widely. If you're in the DC area or nearby, we want you to come on the 24th, see us, join us for the premiere. It'll be great. By the way, there's a special someone you know that's in the movie. He's pretty handsome. He's sitting right here. All right. I, you know, just a little <laughs> bit of shameless promotion. Do not complain.
apply. Words to live by from the Daily Mojo.